Hi guys, welcome to FPSN. My name is Jeff and I'm going to be covering the Ryzen 5000 launch today. In fact, I've been excited about the Ryzen 5000 series for months now since I love the Ryzen 3000 series. So what I did is I woke up in the middle of the night, drove a few hours to the closest micro center and waited in line for a few hours to make sure that I had one to review for you guys as soon as possible. So I just got back, ran the benchmarks, started putting this video together, and uh, hopefully we'll have this out for you as soon as possible. Um, working on this launch night right now. I do wanna make a quick note that I have no sponsors and no ads. This is all my own money and time that I'm putting into this. And that makes me even more excited to let you know that I'm doing a giveaway. So today I'm giving away the 3900X processor that I ran for the benchmarks in today's video. And all you have to do in order to be eligible for this giveaway is to subscribe to the channel and make a comment on the channel. Um, something along the lines of a question about me, a question about computers or tech, anything that you'd like to see in a future video. But that's just some examples. You can comment whatever you'd like and you'll still be eligible. However, you also, after your comment, should add a number between 1 and 10,000. I'm going to be using a random number generator, and the person that gets the closest to that number is going to be shipped the processor. Okay, I want to explain the benchmarks real quick. My benchmarks are going to be in 1440p, highest available settings, and we're going to be using an NVIDIA 1080 for the benchmarks today. So uh, it's going to run into a lot of GPU bound scenarios. So you might be wondering, why are you testing the higher resolution? Why are you testing GPU bound scenarios? Well, the main reason is that I think that a lot of people, including myself, were not able to score a 3080 or similar graphics card um, due to the limited availability. Plus, on top of that, I only have the money for one high-end graphics card. And right now, the 6800 XT is going to be getting my money. And I'll get into more about that once I do my 6800 XT review. Okay, today I'm using the Corsair H150i Pro XT liquid cooler. That's a three slot, so three 120 millimeter fans, and as well as Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Thermal Paste. Corsair Dominator RGB 16 gigabyte dual channel kit at 3600 CL16, and that's set with manual timings with the One Asmus DRAM tool. Asus X570e Gaming Motherboard, EVGA 1080 for the win graphics card with an NVIDIA driver 457.09, a Lian Leo 11D XL case with four additional ML120 fans as well as three Q0120 fans, Windows 10 1809, all updates applied, and the Bitsum highest performance power plan. Driver settings inside the NVIDIA control panel are low latency mold ultra and power management mode prefer maximum performance. So let's get into the benchmarks. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p highest is showing exactly the same between the 3900X and the 5800X. So for this upgrade, no difference for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now that doesn't mean that there isn't gonna be a difference once I get that 6800 XT in there, but this is what we're seeing right now with that 1080. Next is the World of Warcraft retail, 1440p, quality 10. Uh, we're seeing no difference in the 1% lows. However, we are seeing a slight improvement in the average FPS. Next up, we have Metro Exodus, 1440p on extreme. This is their benchmark. Uh, we saw exactly the same low and average FPS out of this game, and it was extremely taxing on that 1080. As we can see, the FPS really didn't even get above 30, so that's not even playable at that setting. Next up, we have Destiny 2, 1440p, highest settings. We see exactly the same low and average FPS. So again, one of those games that we're not seeing a difference with the same graphics card, but once we get that 6800, we'll likely see the difference. Next up is Fortnite, 1440p, epic on DX11. So we're not using the beta DX12 mode. And we actually see a bonus or increase at the 5% low with the 5800X. Um, so the minimum frame rate is higher. However, the average is about the same. So more consistent. 
Next up, we have CSGO at 1440p on the highest graphics settings, which isn't saying much as this is a competitive eSport game. Now, the 3900X got 335 FPS, while the 5800X got 368 FPS. So we did see a, a big increase there, and that was due to the processor. So uh, very reliant on the CPU. So that's why we saw the increase here, whereas some of these other games were not as they are GPU bound. And then I just did a quick six game average of everything we just saw. And we saw that there is a slight improvement, uh, but not much to say being GPU bound on most of those titles. Next up, we have 3D Mark, and we can see here we did have a 200-ish score improvement, which is great. Next up, 3D Mark Time Spy. Again, we saw approximately 140 points extra there. Next up, we have Blender Benchmark. So this will be the start of the productivity benchmarks rather than gaming. We can see that it actually processed the BMW test a little faster about seven seconds. Next up we have Geekbench 5 and we can see that single core improvement was the biggest end of this processor upgrade. The multi-core did get an increase but single core is the hardest one to push up and they did it this generation. Next up we have Cinebench R20 where we again see the single core increase quite a bit and a multi-core actually increased quite a bit. And that'll be it for productivity benchmarks. I want to keep it pretty simple. Okay, so this comes down to my recommendation. So I'm gonna say that the Ryzen 5000 series is still a great processor. Regardless of my benchmarks, you can see at the other TechTubers benchmarks that it is great. So it's kind of the gaming or lower latency. So eSport or music production, Ryzen 3000. Due to that, I'd say most people should probably go for the 5000 series if they can. However, if they just do things that don't require any type of latency, more of a budget build, the Ryzen 3000 series is going to be the way to go. I would not um, downgrade to say an Intel processor. So really AMD owns everything all the way down the stack at this point. And then uh, I just want to remind you guys, don't forget to subscribe. I got some great content coming for you. The 6800 XT, as soon as I get my hands on one, I'm going to review. Um, and if you guys want it, let me know down in the comments. I might do an OS optimization uh, video for AMD specifically. Uh, this will include stuff for Windows, the BIOS, tools like Process Lasso, which includes that power plan that I told you about earlier, um, as well as I might do a GPU optimization video covering G-Sync, FreeSync, input latency, etc. So um, definitely subscribe to check those out here soon, as well as don't forget to comment and leave a number down below for the giveaway. And until next time, guys, thanks. And this is FPSN.